GKFX Prime presents the Market Analysis Webinar. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another weekly webinar. Well, in the last week, we had uh, just about a record high in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, um, also in Bitcoin. There's the prospect of a double top in, in both the stock market and uh, and cryptocurrencies, and specifically Bitcoin. Um, it's a remote possibility, but it's one I'll discuss in just a minute. Uh, the other thing was that the dollar started to weaken a bit at the end of the week. And uh, that helped a little attempted breakout in gold and silver. Silver especially looked kind of interesting, uh, banging into a, a big area of resistance after a decent run up. Uh, I will talk about those all in a minute. But if you have some other charts you want to discuss, please drop a comment in the video. Uh, we always like that. Otherwise, click that like button and then more people get to see these videos. OK, let's start with the euro dollar currency pair. This is our four hour chart. And so if you remember before, we had the down sloping trend line, we've broken higher from that and we have been steadily moving higher. And then over the last week, we've basically we've run into what you can see was the supply zone through here, just about tag that supply zone about a 116.70. And now we're basically in this rectangle here. We're in a horizontal trading range. This is the third attempt um, as we record the video of this supply area. The short term trend is to the upside. And this kind of consolidation is not normally something you associate with a with a top. It's normally something that you'd expect to break higher. So the immediate momentum is higher. This kind of consolidation is typically associated with eventually breaking higher. So I think the odds favor a move to the upside. Um, but uh, and I should mention that we're above the 20 day moving average, which is uh, something critical that we look at for just, you know, taking a directional bias on the market. Um, so a lot of things favor the upside here, um, but the prior move was obviously, uh, you could argue that if we go to the, the daily chart, you know, um, going all the way back to uh, May, but even in this last leg um, since September, the overall trend has been down. So you would expect after a little bounce like this off multi-year lows, at some point sellers are going to try and come in now. That looks like that's been attempted a couple of times, but it hasn't really fully panned out from this 116.70. Now, we could get a pop above 117. Now, if you remember from our weekly chart, that's this low here and sort of a potential way of drawing the a neckline through this um, double top pattern here. But if we get above 117, then I suspect we could actually make our way up to challenge this double top neckline again if you draw it in a sloping manner and that's a bit higher that's a, probably over 118.50 and sort of challenging the supply area um, that that characterized these two peaks up here so um, short-term momentum to the top side a lot of reasons to think probably it does move to the upside but we've got to think that this is still just a small bounce after months of a downtrend so, you know, what are we doing here? Are we predicting the bottom of that months long downtrend? That's not always such a good idea. Um, but you've got to recognize what time frame you're trading on. Uh, you know, we're trading, you know, changes each week. And at the moment, the momentum's to the top side. And I feel like even despite this long term downtrend, uh, which we're not necessarily calling a bottom to, still this correction looks like it can move a little bit further to the upside. Um, how would we determine that we're wrong and that it actually looks like things are heading lower? Well, there's a pretty clear-cut support here um, around uh, 116.20, probably the closest round number. If we've got to drop through 116.20, got 116 just below, obviously, you know, then the, the momentum is the, the upside momentum is breaking down, and that would suggest that actually this little pop higher. I think we can even draw a trend line through these lows. If this trend line gives way and you get a drop through 116.20, then you can, you know, it would be fair to make the assumption that actually this this bounce is not going any further and that we're actually rejoining that longer term downtrend. Right, let's have a look at the British pound. 
It's been a lot stronger than the euro. Um, we talked about it already in, in the week ahead. We've talked about it. Uh, we've touched on it in these webinars too. That uh, the Bank of England seems set on raising interest rates this year. Now they're doing things a little bit differently from others because they um, are still doing QE. They're still buying bonds, uh, but they want to do a bit of rate hikes. Uh, and then a bit of QE. A lot of central banks want to taper down their bond purchases, then start raising rates later. So it's just that the Bank of England doing things a little bit differently. And obviously, from a currency standpoint, you want to hold that currency where interest rates are rising. So we've stalled at 138 for now. Uh, but you can see we're getting a little bit of a bounce off um, this demand area through here. Now, what worries me slightly is that this has already worked once. And then we stall at the high. And now we're, it's working a second time. And it's never, these, these demand areas, supply areas, never as reliable on the second time. So what we could eventually see is a steeper correction lower. And a bit like the euro, um, we're going to keep our upside bias. But if we give, if this, um, if this uh, demand area gives way and we break through the, the rising trend line that's characterized this uptrend, uh, we're going to turn a bit more cautious and, and maybe expect uh, the longer term downtrend to come into play. Now, this declining trend line through these peaks would suggest there's a little bit more upside to be had here. Um, maybe at testing 139 again would be these, you know, these highs through here and this declining trend line. Yeah, may maybe we just don't get that high and we, and we broke the trend line down from here. We've got to be both, uh, open to both ideas. So same thing with the euro, but the pound's uptrend has been going a bit longer. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, we're going to assume that the uptrend is still in place. We're still above the 20 day moving average. Um, but if we do give, if this near term support gives way and the trend, uh, the trend line gives way, then we're going to turn a bit more bearish. Uh, here's dollar yen. It's been the strongest currency pair of them all. It looks a bit messy at the moment because I've added this Fibonacci on there. Um, just the way that I've drawn it, I've drawn it when the trend really started to accelerate rather than from the, the bottom down here. Um, I sometimes do that just because it's good to find a level that's already worked. So you could say that right now we're hitting this 38.2. The market's already reacting to that as a Fibonacci level, uh, among other factors. Uh, so then if we got a drop down to the 50, it coincides quite well with these lows through here in this little spike test of, of 113. So this seems like it would be a good area for the market to test before eventually rebounding. And if, if this gives way, we've got the 61.8 and the 20 day moving average. Is it the 20? Yep. Um, so a few, a, a few layers of support below the current price, uh, which could offer opportunities. And then I think you just say if below the 20 day moving average, below the 61.8 Fibonacci, um, then you start thinking of other things than, than trying to buy a dip in this uptrend. Maybe you start looking for range trading or, or, or downtrend uh, opportunities. Remind ourselves of the big picture here in uh, dollar yen and, and why this downside could continue a bit further because we have hit a major resistance here. This 115 basically has been resistance going back to 2016. So we, you know, we're basically talking about um, in the news. It's been saying four-year highs, but it's close to five-year highs um, in 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 dollar yen. Five-year lows in, in the Japanese yen. So that's pretty significant. Obviously, you would imagine that we've already had a one uh, down week from here. Um, but given how major this resistance is, it wouldn't be surprising to see maybe another down week, um, a little bit of consolidation. Uh, uh, before, if we are to break to the upside, some consolidation first would make sense. So that's the picture there. That that's that second resistance that we broke down. So, you know, I've talked about the twenty day. You know, obviously there's always extra support further below. That would be one as well. Just that level above one twelve. So, uh, just a reminder: we could go from this major resistance down to this, which was resistance tested as support, then bounce. So we've got those FIBO levels, we've got the, the, the former resistance and the, which could act as potential support. But given this momentum for, the, for now, we, we probably want to be looking for upside opportunities in dollar yen, but we're just aware that we've hit some major resistance. 
so this is gold. I mentioned there was a bit of an attempted breakout last week. So we, we did push up to the highest, what was that, a couple of weeks, I think, um, since uh, the 7th of September. So, oh, actually, okay. So, um, yeah, that's the highest in almost six weeks for gold. Uh, but then we we did get a big reversal off the highs. Um, the dollar got some uh, a bit of a bid at the end of the week. Uh, the that was attributed to news from Fed Chair Powell, who basically conceded that yes, tapering does does need to happen this year. They'd not completely certified that it will the Fed, um, but this was Powell saying yes, it's too early for a rate hike, but actually time for ta- it is time for tapering. That was uh, that was basically I'm I'm rewording it slightly, but it was along those lines. And so that tapering, you know, means less dollar money printing, um, and so obviously that's that's good for the strength of the dollar. And so uh, gold, which is priced in dollars, came down a bit. <clears throat> Um, worth noting uh, the RSI that the 60 level in RSI on this daily chart has been a significant resistance for gold going back to July. So if we can actually get above that, then that could be a decent turning point. And it does um, quite neatly coincide with this downsloping trend line. So obviously that was the resistance that we we're facing um, alongside the 200 day moving average. That's this red one sloping through here. So we've got the downsloping trend line, the 60 of the RSI, and the 200-day moving average. So you can see why gold is struggling a little bit at this area, right? <clears throat> uh, it's had one sell-off, but it didn't make it down to the lows. It made, put in a higher low, and now it's made it up and through, and it's had a bit of a sell-off, but it's attempting it again at the start of the week. Um, to me, it looks like chances are we get a bit more upside here in gold, and that doesn't necessarily mean too much, although I, you know, I think it maybe it does mean more than on previous occasions. Given the sixty level, if we can get above there into overbought territory again, that would be interesting. But we do have that eighteen thirty major resistance not far above, so it's still inside a trading range, but it's just it's broken above a few key internal resistances, which could could uh, increase the chance that we actually get above eighteen thirty as well. So it's still choppy in gold, but it's just turning a, a few factors looking a bit more positive. Um, we're at resistance. So, you know, if we see a big bearish day, then, you know, just flip all those, you know, we, I'm talking about a big resistance. If we break above it, that's significant. If we don't, if we roll over from it again, then, you know, that's bearish. This is our line in the sand, basically, these these areas of resistance I'm talking about. Um, on the price chart, it's about 70, uh, one, uh, 1790 and then on our site, 60. Silver's looked a bit more interesting, as I said. Um, it's got its own equivalent downsloping trend line, but broke it a bit earlier than gold did, and um, has now tested these highs. And so there's been a bit of a reversal from the highs, as you'll often see. Um, it's a shooting star candlestick. We haven't had enough to put in an evening star. If today's, uh, if Monday's candle closes lower, then um, that 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 would actually be a, a bearish technical signal at an old resistance. That would be quite a decent bearish signal. But for the time being, we're above the uh, I believe what we got here the fifty day oops, just the fifty day moving average, and uh, we've broken above the downsloping trend line. Um, we're just pulling her back a bit from 25, which is obviously a big round number. So um, it looks probably like a, a sort of time when you don't want to be buying at the peak, but it does look overall like silver's turned a bit more positive here. If we pull down to the four hourly chart, you can see that um, bearish engulfing candlestick here from the resistance that we pointed out. That's It looks like the pin bar on the daily chart. Then on a four-hour chart, you've got a kind of bearish signal from this bearish engulfing. It's moved up into this. There's probably a decent chart that it rolls over a bit further. And then we've got our, um, you know, uh, resistance and then support uh, down here on the four-hour chart if it gets that far. So you've got 24 is the immediate support if we if we get a bit deeper here. And then down to the same support and resistance again, which is about... Um, one, it's about 2350. So, always difficult to buy at the highs. Um, 
if you're feeling a bit aggressive, you could actually sell at the highs or wait for an opportunity to rejoin this upward movement a bit lower. Moving on to the oil market still, we, you know, we said last week that we've got to stay positive on this market. It's such a clear uptrend. Um, I've drawn this this uh, uptrend line on the price chart, which I think covers, you know, I think that defines pretty well the trend that we're dealing with. And then most, most recently, 81 has been a very clear level of, uh, of support. Um, you can see that that was the peak and then it's, you know, it's been the source of several lows. So uh, while we're above 81, still pretty good for oil on the short term. A, a move through 81, I think we probably get a deeper pullback. And if that move through 81 coincided with a break through this rising RSI trend line, which connects most of these recent lows, um, that that would also be a bit of a bearish sign. Uh, just a sign that there's going to be a deeper pullback. And after such a run up, you know, it could be something in the order of a, a 38 or a 50 percent pullback. And I mentioned the, uh, I think this was even the case last week. How many days are we going back? One, two, three, four, five. Well, I think we were a bit lower last week. We were talking about the break through the, right, the declining trend line. <clears throat> um, and, you know, I said we were going to probably likely, most likely going up to, to test the, the old highs. And that's, that's what's happened. And now, you know, um, it, it's a long-term uptrend in the stock market. We've had a 5% correction and now we've rallied back up to the highs again. So there's a pretty good chance that we just continue on higher with the uptrend, having already completed the correction. Um, but the risk to reward ratio on a um, on trying to predict a top in the market, given that we are just currently at the old highs, um, is good, right? Yeah, that's uh, the, the chance of it t of it actually being a working trade is quite low but the risk to reward is good because you're at the high and even if you sell it down to the recent lows uh, versus the risk you'd be taking near the highs that's, that's quite low just selling it arbitrarily at 4550 is one way to go but probably um, a more conclusive way to go about it would be to wait for some more supportive price action so say for example if we had a, um, a break to the upside um, where we got as high as perhaps 4,600, which is a round number, uh, we were breaking high, and then we had a big reversal back under the old high. Um, you know, the market rally 50 points, but then it dropped 100 points, something like that. You, it would obviously be at lower prices, but it would be a false breakout, and it, you'd be a bit more confident about trading down to weaker prices. And then uh, the chart looks different, but actually it's a similar setup in uh, in bitcoin which is challenging its highs since march in the case of the s p 500 it's, it's challenging its highs from uh september obviously a, a lot more recent uh, it's taken bitcoin a lot longer to excuse me uh to get back here but nonetheless that's what's going on we've made it to record highs just shy of 67,000, and then we've dropped back um through these old peaks and you can sort of see it was it was these levels. I haven't drawn it so well that it was sort of these. This is the, the was the major resistance, right? And we got a, a break and then just a gap down through it. So that was kind of the major level, and and actually that's what we're testing right now. So I think while we hold above, um, what level is that? That's uh, fifty nine four hundred. You could say it's fifty nine five hundred, maybe. In that vicinity, um, you know that's kind of the uh, it was it was resistance. Um, now it's now it's support, and if if the support gives way, then I think we see this deeper correction in Bitcoin. For right now, that looks good. I mean, record highs are a bullish thing, and we've had a pullback, so this is not a bad setup for for bulls. Uh, but just be aware of this kind of I would say small risk, but potentially interesting opportunity that it's actually a double top. All right, I'm going to call it a day there. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, so you don't miss the next week's video when it comes out. Thank you.